Years ago, a series of USA Today articles documented that there are large multinational corporations on the New York Stock Exchange today that actually got their start in the slave trade. But when slavery ended and Africans could no longer be financially exploited, many of those same corporations began pouring millions into the eugenics movement. The people they had found so valuable as property, they had little use for as fellow citizens. And again, some of those corporations and foundations and institutions are still around today, and every year they still pour millions into eugenics organizations like Planned Parenthood. In fact, if you look at Planned Parenthood's donor list, it reads like a who's who of corporate America. You also have individual elitist doing the exact same thing. People like Bill and Melinda Gates, Warren Buffett, Ted Turner, and many others have used their own personal fortunes to make sure that the eugenics movement never runs short of money. Of course, if you confront these people or these corporations about their support for organizations like Planned Parenthood, they'll tell you it has nothing to do with eugenics. And if someone is naive enough to believe that, that's fine. But to me, it's like someone saying, yeah, I'll give a few million dollars a year to the Klan, but I'm not really a racist. After the abortion pill, RU486, was approved for sale in the U.S., the controversy surrounding it kept the abortion lobby from being able to find an American company to produce it. That forced them to look for a foreign manufacturer. And after an eight-year search, a company owned by the Chinese government agreed to manufacture the drug for the U.S. market. The company's management made the decision after the Rockefeller Foundation agreed to provide financial backing for the project. There's also another connection between Rockefeller and RU486. At the end of World War II, the German chemical manufacturer IG Farben was identified as the company that supplied the gas used in the Nazi concentration camps. The gas was called Zyklon B, and evidence later showed that Farben's executives knew how it was being used. In fact, evidence was uncovered to indicate that Farben engineers had actually designed the gas chambers. This led to some of them being tried at Nuremberg for crimes against humanity, including genocide and slavery. Interestingly, I.G. Farben was a financial partner with John D. Rockefeller and Standard Oil of New Jersey in a company called Standard I.G. Farben. In addition, within three months after Hitler came to power, the publicity director of Rockefeller Foundation and personal advisor to John D. Rockefeller, a man named Ivy Ledbetter Lee, was assigned the responsibility of directing public relations for I.G. Farben. After the war, I.G. Farben would change its name to become known as Hurt AG. Today, Hurt is a gigantic multinational corporation with subsidiaries all over the world, including the United States. Ironically, one of Hurt's subsidiaries, Roussal Ucloff, is the French company that developed RU486. In other words, the same company that produced the gas used in the Nazi death camps also produced the abortion pill that is now being used in American abortion clinics. And in both cases, there was a known connection to the Rockefeller Foundation.